Well, here we are, folks. Uh, we're back with a uh, live, <laughs> a live victim, shall we say? We're, you know, in this in this ongoing attempt to try to actually share information one to one, you know, with a face where somebody can say, as I said last week, where somebody can say back to me, uh, "Did you mean this?" <laughs> we, you know, this is that opportunity for John Wellman. So, John uh, is going to be on. It's going to be on the screen just in one second, and I just want you to. Um, to meet him, actually, let me see if I can blow the screen up. Just pick on you, John. And there's John. So now, hello, John. <laughs> hello. <laughs> I know I'm talking myself into total confusion. Yeah, I was watching the whole time. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Uh, so this is John out of Toronto. John, you're you're Toronto, Canada. You're born, and raised there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And did you have art school yeah. stuff before this, or what's your what's your background? Give us some ideas. No. I mean, there's an art program in my high school, so uh, I was pretty much unstructured. Uh, oh, well, my mom, when I was a kid, had me do folk art, you know, like yeah, stencils yeah. and stuff. Like that. <laughs> but pretty much, yeah, I just had had to draw the Marvel way, some some basic books. But it was uh, not until I found your channel that I really feel like I made any progress. So that's been what a year, two years, three years, four years? Uh, just, <laughs> I've only been on here three years. <laughs> so you've been on here almost yeah. since I started. You've been paying attention. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you had maybe a hundred videos or a hundred. Oh, okay, videos. right. Are you one of those guys that went right through and watched all of them from the scratch? I just recently, I think I've cracked you all of them. Back. I left yeah. the live streams to the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's nice. Uh, well, John, nice, nice to have you aboard, and I see your paintings there. And so that's, this is, by the way, for you folks, that's going to be the last shot you're going to see of John, except in the corner of this video. <laughs> it might be the last you see of me too. But that depends on Mr. Uh, producer there. <laughs> And if it feels like playing a joke, it could get pretty fun. All right. So uh, we're going to look at John's pictures tonight, though. He's been working on a lot for these last couple of years. And uh, John, have you done drawing and that sort of thing uh, leading up to this? Did you say? I think you said that, right? Did yeah, you work so with the Barg stuff? Or? A month or so before I found you, I was doing Barg plates. Just um, copying so them um, on your own? Just copying them on my own. Yeah. You know, not full size, maybe 8 by 10. Right. Uh, yeah. Maybe something a little bit bigger, but I was just copying them. Did you have photo, measuring? Did you have? Uh, all right. Are you enjoying getting out of the I, the uh, ruler measuring mentality? Well, that's how I found. <laughs> it was I was going on to find more help to copy my bar plates, and I found your video, which blew my mind. So, you know, <laughs> I I set it all aside and, and start following you, and that was it. Yeah. Very good. All right. I'm going to go to. We're going to. So we're going to look at John's images, and the first two we're going to see are going to be. Uh, the very earliest, and we, John, I just want you to tell us about them, and I'll talk to you, talk, talk you through them uh, as we go. So I'm going to now start sharing the screen, and I hope I don't mess it up like I did last time. All right. So what I, what I want you to do, I don't mean talking about stuff, because what really matters if I'm going to actually be effective in giving any kind of critiques is, uh, and it won't apply to this one, but I want to know whether or not your uh, image that you put side by side, if there's a problem with that shot, if it really is taken, for example, side by side with the painting, that's something we can understand. If it's not taken side by side and you took them at different times and different lightings, I'll have to know that because otherwise you're not going to get a, a yeah. worthwhile critique from me. Yeah, uh, I will. Okay. They're all in, you know, they all have feelings with the photos, but uh, yeah. we'll talk about those as they come through. This is just here to show, you know, myself and, and anyone else where I started. So yeah. first time trying to paint from life. Well, what did you, was, what were you thinking here in this one? I mean, you had been listening to the videos, and you had thoughts because of my videos. Well, this this was this was before I really absorbed anything you had said. But I just thought, you know, I need to start trying to put paint on canvas. Yeah. And so I, yeah. you know, I was up at a cottage, and I found a cup, and I found a lemon, yeah. and I just tried to paint. But I had no anchors. I had, uh, you know, I just pushed shapes around. Yeah for three or four hours on the first one, I was going to swear it all off and never try again. But I, <laughs> this is where your first aphorism stuck in my head. So paint by the spots. And I, I didn't know what it means. I pr it's probably not applied properly in the second oh. attempt here. It shows. But, you know, I, I had that in my head and I, yeah. I was just, you know, there, right. I, there's some feel of progress there mm -hmm. that was like, okay, I'll try again. And that's where we. So for our viewers, what you're going to be seeing after this is going to be side by side to a photograph of what he's working on, plus what he's working on. Not the next one. Is the next one or immediately? Maybe that one starts with it. Yeah. And that's different. With the first one, you don't get to see that. So we can't, it's not, there's not much point in making a critique or, but this one, every, everything about this, I'm going to assume until you tell me differently, uh, John, that these are photographed exactly 
from the viewing point. It looks like I'm looking at the airspace in here. That's that's pretty similar to this. You you were yeah. standing in very much the same place, yes? Yeah. You tried you to. Know, more or less. I can't remember back very far, but I think yeah. uh, more or less this one's representative. Yeah. Uh, this one gives us, by the way, so just let me do a, what I typically do, right? Just off the, off the cuff and uh, just a, a chain of consciousness, if you want to put it that way. This one does, in just in the setup, this does something that Gamel would advise you against, and that is you have a front of a table, to, you have a table front here, and you have it turned enough so it looks like you can't draw. If you drew it exactly the way it looked, it would look like you couldn't draw, or that your table is right. slipping down on the side of the page. So I don't know if that's, it looks like you're shooting a vertical shot, so you must have a crooked table. Uh, Gamble would just say, set up the front of the table, either decisively going away from you, or absolutely horizontal with the frame. But be, that's just a point we can make, okay? That's helpful. Yeah. Uh, but tell me on this one now, now, it looks like you have a lot of, of, uh, of glare on the left, on the painting. Uh, I'm looking, tilting it for myself. Is that so? I'm seeing around the edges, I see a lot of what I'm calling glare. Yeah. Is that just yeah, a bad glare. photograph or is that, it's impossible to find, to get it without glare because you painted so, your strokes are so <laughs> haphazard. <laughs> no, I, you know what, this this one I didn't really take too seriously either because it was, I, I found the composition so poor looking back after two years that uh -huh. I didn't even know that you were gonna look at it, so. Um, <laughs> well, what yeah, would you like to talk about on this? Talk about something on it that was interesting that we could. Use. Well, so 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 I had absolutely no uh, ability to mix colors at this point. So especially right. neutrals, and I was chasing around that box. I at this point I still had not integrated any of your real teaching or ideas. So I okay. have no interesting silhouettes here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, there's not no interest in the bulls. I had too small of a still life stand, so yeah. I started trying to create a still life stand. And then over the next couple of pictures, that that improved. It gave me more space to work. Yeah. But this one, I can't remember what was going through my head because I was so untrained at the point. I was just picking stuff out of my office and putting it on a table. Yeah. Well, thank you for showing us that because it matters as we move along because everybody's everybody's struggling with their inadequacies, <laughs> like to call them that or something else. But uh, <laughs> at the first phase, I mean, all we are is a is a guess. You know, we're just a guess machine, right? No idea yeah. what we're talking about. So here you have a better platform. A better, Slightly better platform. Yeah. And a little yeah, bit more interesting yeah. silhouettes, albeit the whole thing being pretty quiet. I was trying to make a light that, you know, a light effect and have basic anchors in this one. All right. So, you know, I wanted a dark, dark, and I wanted lots of lights, and I was practicing with neutrals. I still missed the general tonality. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't take this one very serious either when I was preparing for, for meeting you today. But... Um, Okay. You know, poor composition, I would say. But uh, well, there's things about it that are reasonable. But um, the question on this one is: um, Were you off this far in values? Is this a good photograph? This one here. Uh, I was off that did? far in values. Okay. No, I was off that far in values. Good, and you're off that far in warmness too, right? You see the general tonality, a general I was coloricity. Off that far in warmness as well. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, yeah. Perfect. And I noticed that when I put it up, you know, because I bring these paintings down and I put them on the chair rail in my dining room. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, criminal when I saw it. So. <laughs> so, so why didn't you notice it when you were there? <laughs> That's the famous question, right? <laughs> <laughs> because the complexity of painting from life, honestly, right, right. at I, that point, <laughs> I just needed to dribble, like you say. I just I yeah. needed just more time. Yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of them will go off your leg. There's no question about that. <laughs> this one has some of the same problem, though, doesn't it? The picture, you made a it cool does. picture that's a warm picture, and you're, you're not going to say these pictures are that... The photograph is pretty representative of what you did. Yeah, so on the left, it's a little more washed out maybe than than what the painting looks like in front of you, but the tonality does not, I don't get the warmth in the background. The background yeah. in yeah. the painting is too red. So what do you, what would you do about it today? Just looking at these two images, how would you, what would you do differently or how would you, how would you go about making this a better color you picture? Know, you, you're <laughs> going to still say my backgrounds are pretty, I, we can talk about that later. Oh, not, but actually, let's not worry much about composition. I really want to know what you do with paint. Because most of what you're spending your time on, you are trying to, and this is definitely an improved composition. It strongly suggests you were taking a peek at uh, Bob Hunter, who's a, who's a yeah. terrific example, just to get people started. A very, very good example. And a pyramid is, is as good as anything, <laughs> just you know, to give yourself a sense that you maybe you can achieve something. And even looking back, you know, I 
the photograph, I, I don't mind. I, I almost would have taken another shot of painting it today if I could set it up again. But the yeah. painting, you know, is flawed in many, many ways. We could all. Uh, so what would you like me to yeah. talk about here, if anything? Um, I'm putting it to you. <laughs> Why are you? You sent it to me. Pardon me. You sent this to me. So, oh, are these? Is this that group that we could we could start further forward? I don't mind doing that. We can just show people your work. Okay, let's yeah, do that. So this yeah. Is still, yeah, it's not. This is you know. I can see so many failings in these ones. It's probably my more recent <laughs> ones where yeah. I'm really I can't see as much of the fault. Right. Okay. So you know, in this one, I'm sure you could point things out. I wouldn't notice, but I can notice so many things like the size of the uh, the rear pot so wrong, and yeah. just the colors don't. Oh, so I, they aren't relationally interesting. Yeah, no, good. That's good. Yeah. No, that's good. And but but this is an improvement in both the general color impression, you know, the color scheme and the um, and the yeah, and, the, and the, the disposition time, of the values is is much more interesting. At the time, I felt good about about this. You know, looking yeah. back, this is probably a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, it's not something I'm proud of, but. Oh, and I, no, no, but you don't have to even say that. I mean, because we're, this is progress, right? But this is clear progress. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And for that reason, it's you know happy to show you, even though it's, it feels well. Funny, but, uh, I had a student recently who's not a who's not a, who's not a late com, late comer, and I made some quite fairly strong critiques, but and it was to the point of almost discouraging that person. And I said, but wait a minute. You set up a beautiful painting. You just have to start respecting the painting. <laughs> it's the setup, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> this painting is more beautiful. There's no reason for the for the setup to be more beautiful than the painting. <laughs> so just that's yeah, something to have. Like, yeah. It, yeah. If you make a comment on the photograph, I'm almost more interested than in on the painting because the painting is so far from the photo, but in yeah. terms of the composition of the photo, is there anything that's really lagging? Yeah, the only thing about this that's curious is why we have this 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 um, interloper sitting over here on the right side. <laughs> what does that blue with spots have to do with this picture? <laughs> so you have a warm picture, a beautiful color scheme. What what is that sitting there for? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have even noticed that at the time. I would have thought, hey, it's different. So let's do yeah. So well, remember the idea of going together. You know, it's a no basic thing. You know, chefs, everybody yeah. gets that. <laughs> And so yeah, you yeah. can have a blue in a picture, but that's one of those things where I'm suggesting you think it through. And, and actually, the way you think it through with a blue like that is to try five other blues, and you'll find the blue. If you actually want a blue, get the get the one. This is a warm picture. That blue goes in a different picture. That's just that's all. Nothing to. And by the way, remember yeah. remember, I'm not just picking on you. I'm trying to say things, you know, to so the public. So these points yeah, of discussion yeah, are out there. So. But yes, that's but you're going to start one of my later ones because I didn't realize <laughs> it in this one, but right. I realized it later on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There. That's cool. Um, yeah, let's keep going. There's, you you can't you don't even want to make all the points in every one of these things that could be made, and I don't even mean to use you that way. You see that horizontal line yeah. again that isn't. Absolutely. So this I, is you know, when you're getting better. The first time I noticed. Yeah. 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 This one offended me, you know, when I noticed the paint, when I put it up, yeah. I was like, oh boy, that doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah, I well, became more careful. Yeah, the one, the one thing, I mean, your blues actually, you have, at least in this photo, you have a nice set. You have sets, a set of blues, which is a good thing. That's a thing to learn from Bob Hunter. <laughs> when he puts a blue yeah. down, you're going to find players that are t yeah. sort of playing on the same instrument, you know? <laughs> so that's a good yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. I had these spotlights so I could work at night and, you know, some yeah. funny shadows. It's, you know, this was just practice, more or less. But uh, Well, everything we do is. That. You're like a doctor, man. You're just practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. But the composition, I was like, why are all the bottles the same height? I don't know. I just didn't. Uh, so this is, still, this is still one you're not particularly interested in talking about. I can make a point or two, but other than that, no. The next one is where I start to okay. uh, all right. feel... Yeah, I'm more interested in your critiques. From this here one, forward, yeah. I still like this one. So when I, ha I have this one up, I still enjoy looking at it. I like the mm -hmm. left side mm -hmm. far more than the right side, mm -hmm. but I know there's painting, definite painting issues, especially the bowl is not lost in, you know, it's not in the visual order. It's like, a yeah. cutout, so I yeah. just threw away all my thinking when I got to <laughs> working on that bowl. Yes. Um, yeah, there's a word yeah, for these sins that you commit here. There's a, there's a, each one of them has its own, uh, you know, it's like when you have the eyes too high in the face, it's called a horse face. 
lay it on me on this one. I'm interested. But. Well, I'm just saying there are there are categories of things like that. So you want to ha actually have them in mind as you're. You want to learn all of them so you can actually. Oh, that's that. Oh, dang. You know, <laughs> you can call them things to avoid or whatever in the same the sense of solecisms or something. But no, this one, though, the background is that dark, and you didn't do that. Is that what you're saying? You didn't well, lay it okay, in. So the background, that, no, that, that's true. That photo, that was maybe end of day when the sun was setting. So ah, it's now west face. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the light effect is actually stronger in the photograph than it was when I was really painting it. So I, I think that's truly non-representative. Yep. But this is one where... I had a bit of a halo on the background because I did the back. I laid in the background just a general tone, and then I was working on the the the, the subject at the front, and then I ended up with a, a rim around the subject, and I had to try to bring it back into the background. I wasn't really painting wet into wet, yeah. um, and so so then I I just kind of when I was done the subject, the foreground, I just went and painted the background, and I did it all false, and that's one of the things that bugs me about this yeah. is I didn't yeah. really look at the background and paint it to be nature. I just, I just laid in a false vignette. Yeah. Well, that's the one where if you're, oh, oh, so, but it's so, you just, you, you confuse me now because you are saying that the background actually is darker than you have it in the painting. You made a silhouette uh, that doesn't exist or point at the, so, tell me which part was where you're saying you made a false vignette. And I don't so, know if you mean, yeah. Like, so in the painting, it's almost like there's a, 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 a spotlight in the center of, mm -hmm. the, of the background, or it's like illuminating, and so the and this thing here, darker. This thing right yeah, here, so, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's lighter, the, the value is lighter in the center there, and that wasn't true to life. And so it should be know? more lost through this area here. Yeah, absolutely, it should have been yeah. more lost, but I yeah. didn't design the background at all. You know, I wasn't designing folds in it, I wasn't really able, or... Uh, confident yeah. to control the light effect on the background, yep. and so yep. I ended up just painting on a false background. And that, that does bug me. <laughs> try to, yeah, try not to do that into the future if you actually want to correct yourself. That, what people forget that the primary first job, your first job, is just to be a, a, a slave of nature. It's not your yeah. last job, but it's your first one, and you have to be successful, and you got to finally graduate from being a slave <laughs> yeah. by being yeah. a really good okay. slave. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's not that's not a proud moment. The the background on this, but uh, so then later on, yeah. So the photograph on the right, though the light effects are a little stronger in the photograph than the than they are in nature. Yeah, so there's probably. I th I'm looking I at the cloth so on the right. Bit, I think that the, this area right here. It'd be more neutral. Yeah. You see how that's lost yeah. or nearly lost. So, that's right. It should be. It should have been. It's a better, yeah, it should have been lost. Yep, the values are messed up. And even relationally, the left side should have had light on the cloth, and the right side should have been in shadow. But when you look at my painting, right now, the values are, are reasonably similar between the left and right side. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the way nature had it, I you know, it was completely side lit um, with a little bit of obstruction on the left side of where you can see the drape is hanging across. This one here. But, um, yeah, so most of the light would have been there. That cloth would and have And this general more. area would have been much... That general area should be much brighter than good, the right-hand side. So what, you're, what I'm trying to get people to do, and this is your anchoring moment, right? This is your lightest light or your lightest passage. And you have these lights here. I suggest people go in here and hit this note and then go hit this one and this one and get them in a conversation to each other. But if you're just if you're just living in this world of making this note right and that note right, it's not going to work. It's not. There's no such note. There's just the set of the note. So you hear me saying that. But it's a good opportunity to see that. The other thing is that we're painting value units. So if you blur your eyes, you see that we don't draw this for a long time. The, you see that passage that shouldn't be there. And were you greedy to have that? Or so my question to myself was, oh, there must have been a backlight coming through here and lighting that. But even if there were, it would have made a cast shadow here and it would have been lost, right? So what we're doing, we're, the shape we're drawing is actually this shape. We're not trying to make a, a, a cloth. We're making one, a shape. And down here, the shape you're making is that light shape or some of these lights. But we're not trying to make a cup and put things on it. We're trying to make value units. You, you've heard me say that, I'm sure. 
I have, and to be honest, I wasn't really working from anchors in this. I think I was, um, <laughs> I, in later paintings, I got stuck until I went back to the basics and really forced myself to work from the lightest light, darkest darks, and, Good. and everything in this Good. one. I, I, I didn't have the discipline to do it. I got yeah. far enough with the force, and, yeah. and so we have the failings that we have here. So yeah. I can see that now after yeah, good. another year. Yeah, so you have a kind of, one of the things I like to point out in pictures for a lot of people starting out is you get a kind of representational painting, but it's it's not, a, you're not training your eye yet. That's right. You're getting something where you can, your mom will say, oh, it's so wonderful. Or your wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some people will listen to them. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I tell, I, I have, hey. yep. sorry. Oh well, the, the one thing I could say is that I have I have students, and particularly one who knows who she is, uh, who who will always go in when I have students, and especially first and second year students, and she'll tell them how wonderful they are, and all of a sudden they stop making progress, and I say you have to don't be saying that to people, don't be doing it. They're not. <laughs> they have no idea what they're doing, and you tell them they're wonderful, they're going to go away. I, I it happened in a very visceral way, and with one student, and you couldn't even talk to them anymore after a little while, you know. So, well, I was scared to come in here because reading the Gamble books, I think that <laughs> I was expecting you to be, you know, pretty brutal. I thought I might be uh, my eyes flying, and I told my friends that I was going to be a mess after it. Um, but you can wait to the end. No, I mean, but the fact is, this this is self evident stuff, isn't it? You don't actually even yeah. need to hear me say this and the, and the things associated with this picture. But I am telling you that the party starts when you start doing relationals in a consistent way, and you've already run into that some, and I think it's going to show up in the next couple ones. So this one, this was a major step back in my I, in my mind. So I was furious with this picture when I when I got to the point I left it. I couldn't stand the background being uh, so bright and and off putting, and then the for the subject I found very dull. Oh, the setup, uh, yeah. Being the new okay, boy. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the setup, the setup, and you know the painting this is where you know i've had a lot of questions for you but maybe not the right time or place just about brushwork but uh you know i i i still probably don't know how to make proper soft edges and in this painting right. i really right. uh was just rubbing paint into the canvas to make a soft edge where i was trying to lose it so yeah. i wasn't you know mixing midtones properly and yeah and so i'm not yeah so this one we so just, we can keep yeah, so without talking about this one much, though, um, there's there's consistently going to be with all those people who are viewing is it's going to be this thing between between the setup, and you're going to find yourself in the middle of a painting feeling like throwing up, because of the setup, and the rest of the time is you know you, if you have a good setup, you should be able to survive it for a while at least until you've made too much of a mess out of it, but you should be able to survive it and just keep on correcting backstragglers and you should be fine. But, but you can't fix a bad setup. Gamble would say, as you've heard me say, that your painting is only going to be as good. As very best, it's only going to be as good as your setup. <laughs> yeah, and it was around this time that I was hearing that. So. Ah, good, very good. And and this one comes in somewhere along there? So this comes in afterwards, and yeah, at the time I thought the colors were more um, unified, maybe except for the red. So... Uh, more unified you know, after in nature, or more unified in what you did. Yeah, maybe maybe both. So yeah. so just talking about the setup. So after the the previous one, the reds that that I really really did not like. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember what was going through my head specifically at the time, but I was uh, uh, you know earnestly trying to figure something more neutral out, something less um, uh, chromatic, maybe. And I think I was thinking in threes, and I think I misapplied the idea of threes here. So yep. I was looking for my red, yellow, blue. Yep. Um, but you know, compositionally, I'm not sure that 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 ended in a good place. So I, yeah. I'd like your yeah. feedback on this one. Yeah, on this one, uh, in the setup, you didn't actually need the blue pot, and you don't actually need red, yellow, and blue. You need red. You need triads. So mm -hmm. this thing in a neutral picture, this is the blue. This is the yellow, and this is the red. You follow? So this blue is pushing it. It doesn't actually necessarily belong in this picture. Uh, the cup? The, this, the, this the little, yeah, this little dish here, the blue one. It doesn't have a reason to be there that I can see. It actually feels like the odd guy out, like you had on the left, right side of a the other picture a while back. It's, it's, it's yeah, so I, yeah. 
Go ahead. I'm starting with, you know, the jug. So I just got that jug. I was like, okay, I want to work a picture, the big yep. one. Yep. And I think I got the teapot at the same time. So yeah. you know, I probably started with those two things. And then I'm thinking, okay, this there isn't enough here. Or there's only two things here. Or what should I have done next? Yeah, the third thing is fine. You actually have three things in any case before you ever bring that in. Let me uh, just say one thing about this. The uh, setup isn't crazy. Uh, the fact that this blue... Uh, I can't make it. See, when you're looking at something like that, you're trying to figure out whether it belongs to the picture. You have to look at the whole picture. What is it? What, is it actually completely in sync with the rest of the picture? Does it feel like it's a participant? The coldness of it makes it say, no, this is a warm picture. You see how warm this picture is, by the way? That's a general coloricity. It's richer as a general richness, and it's yellower as a general color. Do you follow that? Is, and, but it's warmer than the one on the left. The one on the left is far bluer. Than your, so, by the way, in your own mind, you might you will know whether or not the setup was really that warm, the photograph fake messed it up or something. You don't have to defend yourself. If you think it's, my comments are worth something, live with them. Save, save time. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'm at this point, I still was not taking a lot of care to get the the cloth colors mm -hmm. perfect to the mm -hmm. nature. Yeah. yeah, I was more struggling with the light of like the lightest lights and trying to get the light effect. Yeah, um, well, so whatever this blue is doing, I'm not quite convinced it's the one, but I'm not saying anything of like that. But if we eliminate this blue, and it's one of those things I can do actually on the on a computer, you know, just eliminate things like that and show yeah. you what it would be without it. You can do that yourself. But this red here. If you took this red and crossed both of these guys where this blue one is and actually made the lip run over the side or whatever, you'd probably have a better composition and just eliminate the blue. But, I'm, but you, I'm only saying that to keep the color more unified. If I can just block this one out, the, the color is more unified yeah, and it has the sense of three. Uh, I, do make, I do take the time when I have a decidedly warm picture to make sure the, the cloth is on the warm side. And that looks like it's relatively a warm linen, so that's good. But to the extent that it was actually a white one, <laughs> if it was a white, white one, you know, so it comes out as blue, it's, it's probably going to be more problematical for you. But okay. no, I wouldn't say more than that, except it's all trial and error after that. But learn to look at pictures. You have to have, you want a range of chromas. And it's okay to have a single red chroma as long as you have red pickup somewhere and somewhere. You know what I mean? That's the red pickup. And even yeah. the dark stuff in here might be dark red. And the same thing applies to, you know, whatever you're calling blue. As long as you see a, a set of them and they're not yellows or reds, then we're in the threes game. I was expecting you to say that what's that red bull doing in there? Like, <laughs> no, like, not at all. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not picking on the red, to be honest. That's yeah. interesting. Too. Yeah. I wouldn't have seen the blue. That's helpful, though. Yeah. I need to reflect on that. Yeah, yeah. Let yourself have that. In the meantime, by the way, every time you see a spot up here that's got color in it, there's a yep. pictorial unity aspect to that. Make sure you don't fail to see relationally. <laughs> and don't paint it to be accurate, paint it to be in the game. Yep. So yeah, and so one of the things just to keep in mind here, the brief one is just, this is a warm picture. It doesn't even call for blue per se. As long as you have that sense of it being a triad, you're there. And so don't push that, right? You'll lose some real seriously good harmonies. Um, by the way, the uh, folds in this picture are pieces of their, they contribute to one another, this and all this stuff here. Even some of the parts of this, there's the strings on it, are of a piece, they are a set. You follow that? So don't be thinking what you're gonna eliminate if you want to have a, this picture is better for having that set defined. It's a, it's a fascinating set, right? I see. And I'll so go. just something to think about. The other thing you might think about is that you have a dark thing sort of thing here and instead of a light thing, you might have considered a dark or something with some darks on it and considered an, a, a, a larger distribution, you know, a, like a dark, a dark, and a sub-dark. Consider, I'm not saying do it. I'm saying those are the kinds of things. You don't have to always be doing this red, yellow, blue trick if you're already there. On the other hand, this could have been more a neutral, but also did that. You with me? And served a blue purpose. But it doesn't have to be just... Picking a color out of the blue, you know, now you're stuck with, you have a red and a blue, and what's this guy? What's this stuff doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so once you put yourself up in those categories of richness, you know, or changing the subject, if you have one rich thing, you're better off than having two and not three. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? If there's a declension, what I mean by that is if there is a rich red and then a lesser yellow and then a dismal blue, you see what I mean? You're talking about a set, logical set. So you want two, sorry, I, I might have missed it. You want two 
You don't need um, two rich ones side by side, no, but if you do, I'm going to suggest you probably need three. <laughs> I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you can actually logically move from rich, rich to less rich to this, you know. But I it see. doesn't feel like it wants to do that yet. So, but that's just telling I you see. about this way, the way one thinks eventually about this kind of stuff. Let that stuff teach itself to you. Just keep in mind the idea of unity, how things hang together. You can see why I might say, what, wouldn't it be nice if this were more of a, a linen color? Because it would hang together better. Uh, this picture is a yellow picture, shall we say? You know what I mean? Let's live with it. Let's get used to it and make the red, yellow, blue, all yellows, so to speak. I see. All right, so let's just, uh, in this one here, you, you changed everything. So I don't know really what you've got. You've got candelabras over here in the painting, but you don't yeah. have them in this. Is this something we should talk about? I, I, this yeah, is, this I is a different I, cloth I, here, too? <laughs> it's the same cloth. It's the same cloth. And the same okay. color. So you missed the value? <laughs> I might have missed the value. I did give up on this one when I realized that the, the colors were wrong. The red, yellow, blue, I, I really didn't like Oh, you like mean they didn't like one. the way they went together? I didn't like the way they went together. This is the first time I really realized how bad a bad setup could be. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't strike me as being as bad as you're taking it. I'm, I'm trying to sort that out. So maybe in life it has a little more of that. Uh, I, this one doesn't do, the one before it actually has a little bit more of that, not by much because of that blue thing. This blue thing, the, the whites are forming sort of a set of blues. This certainly to this is forming a set of blues. And this has a blue element to it. And then this, there's this whole body of yellow stuff all through here. And that's a good red for them. So I'm not sure I agree with that assessment of it for yourself. <laughs> so, okay. uh, well, on the other hand, you, this is the one you corrected. This is a new one. <laughs> so maybe you improved it a bit. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. All right. We don't have to go on with that. Yeah. Uh, but I, but this is clearly more harmonious than that one. Yeah. Would you say okay, that's good? So that's so if that came second, you did you 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 pick it up. You're fine. So you'll be fine the next one, as it were. This one's all values, right? You know, this is just an all. If these two photographs, if this photograph is reasonably close to what you were painting, everything about this picture is a yeah. values problem, right? This is not a black picture. It's not a deep inky picture <laughs> or a deep neutral picture. Um. It's somewhere up <laughs> above that, right? It's in that, at least in the halfway values, and, and, and the colors have got, got more life in it. <laughs> Sometimes when you look at pictures, try to understand them that way. What do I got here? Well, the biggest words you could use are, what's the general tonality of this picture? Is this a dark picture, a middle tone picture, or a light picture? It's just very useful. How rich is this picture? I'm just talking about it in general ways. So it, it will help you. And is it a red, yellow, or blue picture, right? And uh, so even, by the way, if this has got yellow and green in it, it might hit, it's, it's trying to be taken over by the orange and then has to fight for its life against the purples and stuff. This is one that doesn't quite get there. It's like you're being too uh, heavy handed with forcing those logical combinations of purple, of purple, green, and, and red. But I wouldn't say more than that, except that these two guys here want to be warm. And I'm not sure what these, this guy wants to be out here. So I don't feel it. I feel like you're missing harmony coloristically. But these three guys are great together. These three guys are wonderful. I'm wondering if there might be a reproduction issue because it should be yeah. through more brown than purple. It shouldn't look purple. Oh yeah. Well, if it's brown, then you're in the right family because it's a warm. Yeah. It should be warm. But the second thing is, are your values that far? So are you really missing your silhouettes that far by that much? But this so, thing here is really rich. From one end to the other, there isn't, there isn't, you wouldn't say there's a neutral in this thing. Nearest thing to it would be that, but, or, or this, but this is really a rich thing in this picture. So your colors aren't live, and that's, a, that's kind of a big deal. What else would you like to mention about this? Would there be something I should talk about? You see the light effect on the uh, handle, isn't there? Yeah, it's, it, this one spoiled on me, so I, I ah, had to drop okay. it or something. And so this was really after maybe one shot. But I, it, your recent video on blurring down, yes. I think I was painting blurry here. No, so never. I, okay, good. Good. Bad. To get the, yeah. to get the, the arabesque, I was right. really blurring down. And then I was painting a blurry picture. I never actually opened my eyes. Yeah, yeah. And I, th I think that maybe was so, some of the issues. So let me, for the audience, let me just say that what the rule of thumb is is you blur down to see what not to paint, but you never paint with your eyes blurred down. <laughs> Do you see what well, you just did a critical assessment of your painting by blurring? 
but you stayed there and you lived in the blur. We don't actually paint as if we're coming out of a blur. <laughs> a fog is a different thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, really was, I really was doing that, though. That's fun. That's fun. Way down. Good lesson yeah. to yourself, though. It's very good. I mean, the, the idea that certain things read better than others, it does show in this. You know what I mean? You do have that idea in there. But you actually keep your eyes open because you want more truth than this from the very beginning. Yeah, you don't want to kill that, that <laughs> seriously. But yeah, I understand what you were saying otherwise. That's good. That's good for people to hear. And now, um, uh, let me just mention just one thing just to start with, or maybe two things. Maybe You might still be living in the blurry zone here, right? And we don't paint that. We don't paint out of our heads blurry. We don't treat this like it's a photograph and our eyes are, or, I mean, I, we have a camera and we've got a, 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 a zoom lens and all the outside edges are, are blurry. We don't do that. Painters don't do that. That's a modern convention and, it's, and it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because it looks like you're a camera instead of an eyeball. You follow that thinking? So what's happening is you don't have a light effect here or here adequate to the game, right? And you don't have one here either. Do you see those? Now, the rest of this thing, by the way, is in pretty good visual order. You know, that's not bad. The colors are way different. You're, you seem to be continually painting cold pictures when you have a warm one. And that's really going to continue to be a question for me about whether you're doing something with your camera or the way if that, you... This one's a camera issue, I think, because this was not natural light, and I photographed the canvas in daylight, so I think we might have... If you paint, have, yeah, never do that, for me, for us, yeah. for this kind of a conversation. If anybody out there, whoever does this, make sure you shoot the... If you're painting in a given light, send it to me, shot in that light phot photographically. That's why it's so yeah, useful to do it side by side with the, camp, with, the, with the sitter at that time. Yeah. 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 Your setup is pleasing. Um, in, in significantly, uh, but the um, but the interpretation of your effect, the order of the effects, you're pretty you're you're really not delivering enough. You follow it in those couple points, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. The only other thing I'd pick on is your warmness, which I bet that yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things about natural light. By the way, is it, natural light I found looks better in every light, whereas pictures painted in um, artificial light often don't look as good in other lights, especially a different artificial light that's a different color. You know what I mean? I just simply found that to be so in my experience. Can I ask a question on that one? Yeah. Is there time for a quick question? Well, there is. We'll just do it. We'll just do it and run out so, of time. Because, <laughs> um, so I, I struggle to get the distance, the three times distance in my in right. my space with yeah. with daylight. So then you have the compromise with the fake the um the, the bulb. So in this case, I set my wife way down the hall, put a, a spotlight with a, a bulb on her, but I kept my canvas in my office, which was there was daylight here. There was west facing. Um, <laughs> now, that, that explains a that lot. A, yeah, the wrong way to think yeah, about it. Me, my canvas. Yeah, it is. What I did, I, I copied a, um, I, in fact, I've showed it on here, the, uh, the one of uh, John White Alexander at the Metropol at the MFA, um, the Pot of Basil. And um, I did that. I said, oh, oh I'll, I can win this. I just, the thing's across the room and I'll just paint it in natural light. When I took the thing out, out into the street and looked at it, it was like insanely bad. I mean, there wasn't a single color on it that looked right. <laughs> so it's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing to think about. Well, what you wanted to do is exactly what you did here. Put your sitter way down the hall and you're painting right next to her in the same light. <laughs> and have fun. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> I should have the canvas in the in the same in light. The ball below. Yeah. And walk back to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, then what typically sort of what happens then in my view is what when you go you take this painting out into daylight, it's gonna do the same thing. I said this painting, it's gonna do the same thing as your sitter, as your wife when you take her out into daylight. <laughs> I mean, colors being colors, they're going to change in rather similar ways. Not completely the same. I would never argue that. but Because you have the cabaret painting. I, I don't know how you did that because it's a dark scene. How did you have enough light on your canvas to paint it? Yeah, that was a thing where I did that, actually. <laughs> what you said. I actually made art. I stood in natural light just to get enough light on it and, and lived with what, so and lived with what I got. Yeah, I did. Okay, okay. But... Yeah, but this isn't the same. When you're standing back there and no. you're painting, it's not going to work see. out the same way. Yeah. I see. 
I'm surprised it's not. I mean, the fact is, if you were a natural light, this shouldn't have looked this cool. I mean, if she's an artificial light and you're a natural light, this should have been ridiculously hotter. This is it right here. It's, it, you know. Yeah, show it to us. Put it right next to your face in front of you and tilt it toward me a little bit. I'll take care of that. Just let me do it. Yeah, you just, can you, and just make it more vertical and, and push it to, toward us a little bit more. Lose your face if you have to. Give it a, and uh, tilt a little top down a little bit more. Uh, I'm getting clear now. Okay, there you go. Almost had it. Do, do it again. Turn it to one side. Just wrote, just bend it a little bit. It's, don't face it at it. Uh, it's not working out that well. But yeah, yeah, it, neither one of them quite does it. That actually looks pretty cool also. But no, the point is, though, what, what, what happens in my setting there was that my candle lights and all that stuff became in natural light. You still have to get that sense of things, right? And so what tends to happen in a blue light is you have to paint more hot because the blue is already neutralizing it. Well, think about it anyway when you're doing it. I don't even know if I want to know why, but try it that way and try it the other way. Okay. And see if okay. you can get Helpful. the benefit of it. Yeah. Yeah. Those things, I mean, talking theoretically about these things is enough to drive you crazy. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about this. Do you think this, uh, your light is right? Was this, is this, was this shot at the same time? You've got to be shooting this to send to me at the same time as you take the paint, or in the same setting in every way as, uh, as shoot the painting. But if you're not painting side by side, it's not as useful as an exercise. The reason, I mean, the, one of the great benefits of side size as a placement on the floor thing. It's just simply that a teacher can come in and somebody else, and they can all see it in the lighting and all the rest of that stuff that you worked in. And we can make these kinds of decisions better out here about whether this is true or not. If the shot of the photograph isn't the same, it's not still helpful. It's not perfect. It's one of the yeah, reasons so I hesitate. Some of my earlier ones that had the glare on them, yeah. I think they might have had the better tonality. And so when I went and reshot them, yeah. you know, I didn't have the same light available. So in this <laughs> room, <laughs> right, right. I would say, you know, this, the, the, the contrast is actually artificially low right. in, the rep in the photograph because I couldn't get the glare gone. It was such a dark background. Yeah, so that's too bad then. Okay. Well, so you know that if you have the light effect. So let's just talk about the things you do have. Is there a reason why you eliminated the light or is that just something that was there so, later? That was not there in the yeah, painting? It, yeah. Okay. It, it, it moved around, you know, so I was chasing the different um, shape of the, the neckline. Right, and so right. this... This I gave up painting this many times and kept revisiting and revisiting every time. <laughs> um, the neckline was a little bit different. And so I almost, there's the cognitive uh, exhaustion as well. Yeah, and so I think yeah. that I probably just gave up on designing when I was focusing on the face. But, yeah. Well, do, uh, they, do, once, much. once you get a uh, plan, like the, the way the drapery hits her neck and that sort of thing, don't ever change it. But what if you sent this to me later, you just didn't put your time into getting you. So you're not defending yourself properly. You know, I mean, if you shot this later and you didn't get the pose right, you're making yourself look bad, like you can't draw or something. So oh, that's absolutely what I'm doing. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. Cause I, I don't have them. I don't have my wife in that room. I tore yeah. it all down the setup. So, yeah, uh, but it is the same lighting at roughly the same place. I can see that that's true. You see this bar of light on her neck over here. You don't have that in the photograph. So that would be one of those things I'd say, did you, invent that <laughs> did you look in no, to see that no, no. No, or was really it actually a different enough lighting yeah and the pose you know the, like her hair even fell over and you know it was yeah, a I different that. day that yeah. i finished <laughs> the painting and and uh yeah so this was probably even a month prior i just had her every saturday i'd get her to sit back and i'd paint for another couple hours yeah and yeah start again start again start again you know it's on you it's, it's on you to put the pose right every time it's, it's a memory thing right and if you haven't run into yeah. it before, it's the turn of the head. Every every single thing, you have to get um, the the rotation right so that the like this line lands in the right place between the two sides. And if your head is vertical, say the tip of the ear, make sure it lines up at the same part of the eye or the mouth that it does mm. every single time. There's that this tilt. There's a there's the this turn and there's the tilt this way, and they're all there. So you have to put, put yourself bang, bang, bang through three steps and make sure you do that every single time the model gets in the pose. They'll, you've got to leave models alone to try to get into themselves and encourage their use of their own memory. They, a lot of people have good body sense. Most women have better than guys, but some women don't have any either. But in that point, it's up to you. But memorize stuff. 
And uh, especially, okay. you want her in the same place in the chair. You want her the same height in the chair. If she's sitting up, if the pillow's missing, I mean, you're going to have such a problem. So you really do want to get as many things to be the same and when you're painting impressions if you're coming back over and over again. So that's one thing to just keep in mind. Yeah. It does look like your, your, your mark making is visual. It looks like there's an order to your edges and stuff like that. Even given this coming later, it doesn't look like you're, you're out of sync with the stuff we talk about. Um, that's cool. I mean, apart from this thing right here, which there's something different about the pose. Maybe your head was twisted more or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. but that in general, the one thing, other thing you want to do though, is when you have a hair part, you have to, you have to put, it, you want it there. So you can let it, models can come in and have a different place. You immediately assess it and say, is this better than what I had or is it worse? If it's worse, tell them to put it back where it was. <laughs> But I was going to say, I was going to, I really like it further this way because of the ride we're taking this way. Mm -hmm. It's more attractive. Yeah. This verticality is not useful. This is almost vertical here, but it doesn't address this one. It doesn't really make a good ride. Well, this is very pleasant. And in fact, this accent here it reinforces it. So it gives you actually three points. This point, the general blob, whatever you want to call it, this mass, and then this point here. It gives you a very nice little run. So just a point. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you do, make sure that you're. Uh, but it, I, I don't even want to say it because this thing. If I saw this in better light, I'd be. I think you're doing pretty. It looks like you're doing pretty okay. I try. I, I try never to set these things up badly, like using white when she doesn't have white back here. I mean, <laughs> throw the black cloth on there. Come on, <laughs> you're not giving yourself half a chance here. <laughs> not bad. I know. It's bad. <laughs> All right. All right. So th this actually is better. Uh, again, that look of blue. I don't know what that is. I'd like to know if that's just taking it in the wrong light. Yeah, that's that's really tough <laughs> for you. <laughs> but this one actually doesn't have the the range of values set up adequately. If it's true, if this note, if this is what you have, apart from the color, your lost and found aspect. That part's good. But your but your um, actually things that are disappearing. You have disappearing pretty good, right? But the parts that pop don't pop enough. Uh, in, in mm -hmm. relation to each other, if your photograph is reasonable. Some parts do better than others. Like this is reasonable here and some of this is reasonable. But the general smash of this isn't the same. And the power mm -hmm. effects in here is not even close. But this actually, this value here is an interesting question. So again, you shot that at about the same time you were painting it, I think, right, probably? Um, or did you, you didn't have yeah. to reset this, right? I think that uh, the photograph is giving an impression of greater contrast than than what I was looking at. So I think the painting this is. might be. Yeah, know, that's very common. Yeah. yeah, that's not common. I think it was pulling contrast out. And so I think it's giving you more of a light effect than was, was true to nature. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and, and then again, in these things here, what we're trying to get ourselves to do is get the interplay of relational stuff. Um, and I'm just saying lights, you know, just, it looks like you're doing, and I'm saying this to, say, to command you, it looks like you're doing that. This thing actually, this is lit more in nature uh, relative to the part below it. I don't know if that's true in your picture, yeah. but I am gonna talk about this spot to this spot to stuff over here. You seem to be aware of that. You're a little bit tall in your, in your ovoid, right? A little tall for the length. So be aware of that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, if you ever send me shots like this, make sure you're shooting from the same angle because I'll think you can't draw ovals <laughs> or ellipses. <laughs> this big dip here. <laughs> and by the way, they're, they are a little science under themselves, you know, the ellipse. When you're talking about a true circle, it doesn't hurt to draw a true ellipse and then adjust the irregularities. People, when they try to draw the irregularities of, say, a Chinese pot, they exaggerate them every time and it looks so deformed. <laughs> So you're better off. It's almost like saying, let's make the arm a tube and then redefine it by its irregularities rather than to miss the tube. <laughs> now, I'm not really yeah, yeah. saying to do that, but it's far more important that we get that sense of, of the circle. And it is a fairly adequate circle <laughs> than to uh, get the curious little irregularities that might this, right. make this dip up over here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, you're largely staying in visual order here. I, I don't think I have much to pick on. Um, just one thing to notice whenever you're anywhere, like in highlights anywhere, make sure you notice which of the sides of the mass is the sharp edged, that is the leader, which one comes to your eye most powerfully. 
this spot right here on the right edge of this, that seems more strong than almost anything else in this light thing. The, so the edge softness yeah. killing the delivery yeah. of the left side. So be aware of that. Uh, this may have a certain thing, sharpness or lightness, but how does it compare to, well, who's the leader? And how does it compare to that, you know? So keep doing that whenever you have a value unit. The value unit has a, I call it the platoon leader, the guy in charge. <laughs> the guy the guy who makes the most noise is, the, you know, he's the, he's the guy that's giving directions. So these, right. the guys yeah. down, you, you might say this one or this one over here. This guy is the one that talks to this one and to this one, but he doesn't talk to this one and this stuff. To, these are the grunts talking to each other, right? This is a serious guy talking to a serious guy talking to a serious guy, right? You see what I mean? Nice. That's the nice. whole mentality of the generals talking to each other and the peons staying out of the picture. The generals don't talk to peons. <laughs> okay. See. Yeah. I, I'm just saying I was in the army, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, yeah, but those are, but those value units. Every, I don't care where it is. If you blur your eyes and paint the order, you're going to be magical. You get make sure you get. If this is a dark unit here that you can blur your eyes and see as a dark unit, make sure you know who's in charge, who the first power is. And make sure you power it up, get it, and get it right to all the other guys out here, not just to the neighborhood. Okay. So, so when you point at that um, cloth and you think shadows need to be flat. Could you just show me yeah, exactly, which sure. yep. higher areas need to be completely flat and where would you permit a reflected light? Well, you can have all the reflected lights in the world. You just don't want them early, okay? If you don't treat it as if it were flat right, from the beginning, you'll overstate the reflected lights and you'll deform the picture. And you'll deform, you'll, you'll kill the possibilities of, of atmosphere. The atmosphere won't work for you. So an example is the shadow line here in the cast shadow of it going over to here and all the way over to this edge here. Now we all can see that there's more, this is more lit. But if you blur your eyes a little bit, we would treat this as if it were flat. And by the way, there are exceptions to these things because sometimes the backlight on something like this is so lit that you can't tell it from a midtone. <laughs> so there are nice. points at which you could say it's flat, but you don't have to say it if it's actually that false. This is another nice. example. It starts down here, goes through the shadow here, comes up through here, make it flat and see how long you can get away with that. Okay. It's, that's the game. It's far more important for it to stay flat because we're not into subcontrasts in here when we haven't even done the little contrasts in here, which are stronger. You see where I am? Yeah. So that's just an orderly way to proceed. And shadows are flat as flat as a hat. It's, it's a conversation. <laughs> Nothing we say is true in a simplistic way. If you paint out of my words, you would paint the goofiest looking pictures. <laughs> But even a shadow like this, you can see the edge of it going up and around and coming over wherever it does and come back here, whatever. It might even jump over that, go back through here, come up at it. But whatever you can see, the more you flatten that whole thing, the more powerfully the form is going to express. It's flatness that reveals form. You follow that idea? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where I am in this thing. Oh, that's good, actually. Okay. We're still fine. I was just looking at my time. Uh, we look like we still have another 10 minutes or more. But don't, don't you understand, though, so that what happens with the flatness is you create the equivalent of a water level, a water pool, right? And so if you're looking into the water, the rock that sticks out is all the form. There's no form. You can't figure out the form in the shadows. But it's also okay. useless to do it because the point of the flatness is to feature the form. <laughs> and the form, uh, the form is a featuring thing, as it were. Do you know what I mean? So, that helps. That yeah. Helps yeah, so the obscurity is... To, to reveal, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a revealer, it's a foil. <laughs> yeah, that's very good, yeah. But everywhere you see it, like in a passage even like this here, it isn't talking about flat shadows, but it's talking about the unity of a dark. What that does by staying together is it features the stuff that, you know, the screamers. And the longer it stays together, it doesn't mean it's true, but it's more useful longer to you <laughs> to get these guys talking to these guys talking to these guys and not have 1400 little oh, little oh, okay. little dummies talking to each other in there that have no nothing to contribute to the conversation at that stage when you're designing the war you don't want to listen to these guys saying but i might get cold <laughs> you know, how are we going to keep our feet warm <laughs> yeah but yeah but but you have a sense of unity in these things that in that way um, but remember, this is not that you can't go as far as you want. You can do what a camera does. You can pull out every detail. But if you pull it out falsely, if you pull it out early, you'll always do it falsely. 
So don't do it before it's time. I got it. That, That's what coming out of a fog is hugely about. It's about, it's time. Blur your eyes down, blur your one eye down. <laughs> Close it gradually and quietly and you'll know exactly where to work. And then open it up and work there. <laughs> okay, that, getting back to what we were talking about before. <laughs> oh, so you want to talk about some paint here? Is that what you said? Is well, it, that's what I had it here for, was to think about mixing mid-tones and just, you know, blurring um, or rubbing in with a brush where to get a soft edge. So I'm really still struggling at soft edges, especially in the left lid there, the white areas. It's yeah. I, I don't think I knew what I was talking about. What happens... I mean, you can make a soft, as it were, edge. Soft, Gamel said, I don't know what use that word soft is. By the way, this really shows up your crimes over here, doesn't it? You'd have no right edge reading and here's all this sharp edge on the left side. <laughs> that's, that's a good one, doesn't, isn't it? <laughs> well, if the photograph is true, of course. I mean, by the way, you don't have to be, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, if it's not, you, you, yeah. Um, but so what I found is that midtones that form these transition points have their own color. That's what the Boston School guys will tell you. So when you make a light and you make some sort of a middle tone, there's this joint in between them, whatever it is, it has, its, it has a right to its own color. But it has a necessity to be the right value. And you will find that getting the right value is more important for a minute than getting the right color. But as soon as it's the right value and the wrong color, you'll have to change the color, if you follow me. And I only mean the hue or the chromaticity of it. But the fact is, it doesn't make any difference how you put it in. It, you know, if you can do it at a stroke or you can not do it at a stroke, but it has to contain the data that's in there. So what's the most efficient way to work with a brush? You know, it looks like you have a lot of marks where there's significantly busier areas than when there needs to be. And that's partly because you're not blurring down and staying within the game you're supposed to be in. But your loading is full of every little thing you can see as if you're counting your way across it. That's what the blurred eye tells you. It says just shut up and hang together. I want you to talk about this edge that reads over here. And the next thing I want you to is give me this highlight. And I don't want to hear about this crap. <laughs> Do you follow me? So there can be a general movement of color and that sort of thing. General movement. It, it wants to be right when it meets this joint. It wants to be right when it meets that. But we're not having this conversation except in general movement of color, general movement of value ways. But if you make a lot of marks, it looks hectically busy and you can't control it. It's beyond you yeah. to control yeah. it. But once you've set up the grand parameters... You can do anything in there you want. You just keep backing up and blurring your eyes and seeing if you're hanging with the, if it's hanging together. Yeah. So it doesn't much yeah. matter that way. But sometimes it does feel like you're maybe using a little more paint than you need to, uh, or that you should do advisedly at the beginning. And this whole thing about thick over thin, that thin thing, I, that lesson from Velasquez is a big deal. That 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 painting at the uh, in New York uh, at the at the uh, Met. I know at the uh, at the Hispanic Society. The one of the cardinal, it's so, it, I just stunned me how much, I could see the entire skin of the canvas. I mean, I said, what, wait, <laughs> that's not what paintings look like. Wait a minute, this is Velasquez, is this a copy? Who did this, you know? <laughs> but he, he, he was so good though, he didn't need a whole bunch of layers, but there's no, there's nothing about thickness. I mean, there's a thing about thickness that has its own pleasantness, I won't say that, but it's a stylistic problem. And your first problem in painting isn't style in that sense, right? Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't if you if you just like this kind of paint. You, you know, the more you paint this way, the better you're going to do it. And all that sort of, you know, the, the thick paint from the beginning. But there, there's lots of rationale to painting standard control till you get the to get the order of the great masses. And and that would be true about an area like this, where if you get the paint so thick you can't change the color without making it twice as thick. That's so problematical. And I want I respect the color so much. I don't want to have to destroy it with the thickness of the next layer, which we've all done. We all do, you know. So, yeah, that's just a thing. I don't know. Should we oh, move to the so. next one? Yes. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, let's do this. Again, you're giving me the pose that's different from the pose you. <laughs> well, I know. I'm getting a shot of the pose. <laughs> I'm so tired by the time. <laughs> oh, so, oh, oh, oh. So you're saying she was collapsing on you there? At the yeah, during the yeah, painting, it's you. She was like working on. She was working. Yeah. So, yeah. The, I got a bad photography skills. It's true, but uh, <laughs> I just don't have a photo of her in that shot. And she was, you know, six months pregnant here. So whatever you do, whatever size you paint her, set them up so they look like this. So they appear to be the same size, side by side, and shoot the picture and send it. 
if you want to talk to me more, it's going to be way more beneficial to you. <laughs> and the viewers are going to wonder out there what you're thinking. Do you really want me to critique this? But it's not the same picture. You really, what do you get from that? But but ask me something. Tell me something, or let's discuss something you want to discuss that might be useful to you. So 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 this was a single day again um, where I ran out of time, or we had to travel, or something, and then right. we got back to it. So yeah, yeah. I would say um, I do. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the composition, the placement, the frame, and you know the lower third. I'm not sure works with the upper thirds. So mm -hmm. I'm just interested in what you would say is the, the chief crimes on this one. This painting uh, is. This is the whole painting. Yeah, okay. that's the whole yeah. canvas. Yeah. Okay. From yeah, a single day. So trying to cover the canvas, I consider that a lay-in. So yeah, yeah. So the thing that I'm trying to get myself to do in a lay-in is to articulate with authority and accuracy the significant leaders. This really comes back to that same discussion of the generals. I'm trying to establish that they know what the hell this war is going to be about, right? <laughs> That's say not the war itself, but the plan to win. <laughs> they got to, So I'm saying, who are the majors? And let's get them all set up. Well, I'd say, who are the generals? <laughs> um, so what are they, right? So what, are, what makes this pictorially, what's the, what's the organizational content of this picture? So you can see that some of it has the st strong things here, you know, big, long readers here, other stuff out here. You're trying to set up that tarbell, aren't you? <laughs> what do they call yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm always grasping for pose ideas, so that was a good right. idea. Right, right. So when you're looking at this, if I was looking at this one, you know, first of all, you got to make sure you have a pictorial idea. What is the thing, pictorially? What is it? That, turns you on and all that sort of stuff. Because if you have that, you have guiders, things will guide you. So, but what is it that you've got? Uh, by, one thing, you, by the way, that you have here is you've lost the hands and it's a good thing. And here you, the hands actually are a tangled mess out here in the front. You know what I mean? And I, don't, I apologize for that. I'm yeah. saying that it's a thing. It's maybe, maybe a derivative of a gamble experience. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the whole just... structure, the chair sitting here, confusing the hands, uh, yeah. you, you don't want to, if you're, if that chair is not supposed to be the picture, take it out of the picture. If she's sitting on the chair and you don't want that yeah. back there, hang a cloth over. <laughs> you can do this, right? <laughs> Just keep it on the memory of that. Whatever you are looking at oh, we're that. Yeah. is ultimately either really wonderful or it ain't. And you can't, you're not smart enough, right? Think of yourself that way. Now, someday you might be smart enough to think I, I can just ignore that. I don't have other time. So, um, but you see what I'm saying though? So this is pictorially a very poor area to have to deal with. You don't want to deal with that. So if she's sitting on a chair and this is the arm of the chair, presumably, could we lose that, you know? And that gives you a chance, by the way, to introduce either something that goes with the skin or another black or another, whatever, you know what I mean? It gives you a chance to bring some other color into the picture, even potentially a dark green. Oh, what did I just do? It's not made to do that. Um, so, but that's a big deal in your setup. Uh, and you know, yeah. the thing about it is you want to set it up and then as it were, memorize it, you want to set up and make it memorable to yourself. Yeah. The only thing that's not yeah. going to be memorable, you don't want to overdo the memorability of it is that you, you're going to be painting this, for example, the drapery and it's going to change on you. And as soon as you sit, the model sits down and it's changed, you say, is that better? Just keep this in mind. It's a movable feast. If that's better than what you were doing, Stay as long as you can in this modality of I'm willing to change. But you don't want to sit there and just be this guy who says, I can do better than that. I'll make it up. Just don't do that. When you see it, you're going to see it. It'll have context and all sorts of stuff. It'll make way more sense than anything you can ever make up. Um, so, but, but is it, so you're, you're looking at this thing, you're trying to figure out who the strong players are and what the game is. So what is this thing? So it's a big blast of light here going to a middle light, going to a, something else, right? There's a movement through through values. And there's distribution, theoretically, of darks in that game. So I'm trying to get myself to become aware of what they're up to and whether I need to make, like if you have a black, black thing here, is there, an, is there some, something that reflects that besides the hair? Maybe just the eyelash will do it or something like that, but that's pretty black. And, um, and, and again, what's the color scheme? So I try, the first thing I do when I set up a portrait, and I'm not even thinking about the, we can do that another time, thinking about the tarbell, but I'm trying to say what sets off the skin and makes it look its most beautiful, and I go through all the colors. I put the background, and it's one of the reasons that portrait painters wind up with green so often, because it's, the skin looks healthiest. You can't 
something in that direction. This kind of color here, rather than that brown. The, by the way, skin often looks good against browns too. But it gets lots of things. But I wouldn't tell you that and say make a formula out of it. I'd say, let's right. make the skin, in this particular case, it's a very neutral picture, let's make the skin the feature. But, uh, and I, you don't want this thing to become some rich, happy green back there <laughs> that kills her, that makes her some weak sister and makes her, her as, a, as a color thing, drift back into the picture. So it's ideal if we can get this to feature, but to feature up the reds makes her look healthier. So uh, sometimes darker, sometimes whatever. With her hair being a middle value, I, I probably would have considered making this a dark back here. Never mind Tarbell, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> making this a darker picture, so you have a black or something with some blacks in it getting to this. You see where I'm going with that? So it's just about listening to what you got. I, this idea is a perfectly nice one. The black on white is fascinating. Uh, you can also put black ribbons in her hair and all the rest of that stuff, or, or, yeah. or bracelets and all that rings and whatever, you know. Does she have any black rings? <laughs> but that's just a distribution problem, you know what I mean? I'm just saying that because you can do that many that ways. That makes sense. Yeah, no, but that's, that's pretty helpful. You see that black right right down there? <laughs> see that? Yeah. It does pick this up, doesn't it? <laughs> Very so funny. funny. Yeah. yeah. But if that, but whatever. But that when you do it, you want that difference in this. This one to be smaller, that one to be bigger, this one to be darker, or whatever, more seen. And you want, if you do another one, well, like do a really big one, then have a middle sized one and a baby one somewhere. It's good stuff. But it's yeah. all the routine of thinking in sets, um, uh, sets, because sets are the, what I'm going to call the, the, the game, the musical that gives it logic, right? It's in the sets. Yeah. So when you're, but when you're a representational, when you're in your student days, you, you know, set something up the very best you can. Try to figure that game out. But it's a different game from painting what you see. And don't confuse them. Do you see what I mean? Right. Keep on separating yeah. them. You get to a certain point, you're going to have to paint. <laughs> right? Especially you only have so much time and you have to get out of town. But, but so do the best you can. Do, get the mileage out of whatever you can, but keep understanding those separate things for you to be personally developing in. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's helpful. Yeah. And then again, if this is a, so this is, comes across as a, different colored picture from this one. Again, you're just not giving me the, you're not giving yourself half a chance sitting these in a different light. <laughs> I'm still betting that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Quit yeah. doing that to yourself. And by the way, anybody out there who wants to play this game with me, please do <laughs> take a lesson. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of promise in this one. There's a lot of nice, by the way, you're, there's a lot of things about your setups that are nice. Uh, when you posed her again, you're not giving yourself half a chance. This is not a good looking thing right here. That's, that's yeah. a very elegant abstraction, your dress is, in this one. So congratulations for that. On the other hand, now you're, you're yeah. painting a background that's very simple, and you got a very noisy background. Your, your wife is sinking into the, at the abyss back there. <laughs> that's not a good look, you know. <laughs> so that's one of those questions, should, have been a, should you have moved her forward so that this silhouette was out here against mm. something lighter? You can have reasons to fear that too, but I would. That's where you definitely want to move it around. Understand that this, this can be lost, but it looks lost. Like this is more important than anything. But I mean, this is like a. It's kind of like deforming her. Her whole shapes go out here and wander right, around. Right, right. It's like abstract painting at its worst. You know. So. Right, right, right. And by the way, people who talk about lines continuing in that way through pictures, that's an, one of the most obnoxious things in design that people do today. Don't do it. Lines pick up, like this line here picks up, but it doesn't pick up at a continuum. It picks up, it creates its unity by picking up another curvy one out here somewhere or by playing back to something going this way. You know what I mean? But it doesn't, on this continuing line here, that's a very boring and, and, and annoying thing to do. <laughs> so you, oh, no, I don't okay. think you meant to do it, but I'm using it as a chance to talk about that stuff. People no. do that in composition. Yeah. That's good. No. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, that's good. But now, on the other hand, so here you're making a dark arm, and here you have a light arm in the photograph. Which is it? Here you're making a beautiful red, and here you're making a dead red. Which is it? <laughs> I know that I'm red. guessing again that you shot this in the wrong light again, but... <laughs> this is the squinting crime. This is where I oh. squinting. The red was not red. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. Never do that for color. So the the famous thing, you know what it is about the... Yeah. the, it's the you know, you're impressionist, your eyes go big, <laughs> okay? Um, it's the popped eye, you think that way, okay? When, you, when you're doing color, you want to take in the field, for one thing, and then you want to keep your eyes really open. But you've heard that before, so you, you already knew that, that's good, that's great. 
But it, it's, it's right. the same. But, but don't weaken things just because they're not in the center. That's, that's completely not necessary. <laughs> but on the other hand, if this is a mistake, just put a red flower in her hand, you know, and win, you know, or yeah. stick one in her hair and give me some head back up here. <laughs> But I'm not saying that's a good thing back there. It isn't a good design thing to have the best red over there behind the, you know, making her look pretty weak. You're killing oh, her. Okay. You're killing her reds. <laughs> These guys are very adequate to make her look good to to coordinate with her, and the fit. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So that's something to think about when you do it. But remember, when you go to do this, we're not making art. We're painting the truth until we're really good at this part. Okay. And 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 the and the only extent we're talking about art here is in the relationships of things that make the beauty of your picture. Do you know what I mean? And that's, yeah. for example, this abstraction here. Will you set her up this way? Make sure you set her up every single time to to, to establish this beautiful abstraction just every single time. And one of the things you're wanting to be aware of is if you if you, once you grasp this abstraction here, which is dominant from across the room. Or, and by the way, that's probably inclusive even of this into this stuff and all that stuff taken together. This is a grand abstraction across the room. Everything you do beyond that should be listening to that. Every design move you make better be listening to that because that owns the place. So as you move into the picture, and this is why Aang is saying, when, like Millet, when you're in a dark room, you can see what your picture is up to. It's not a good picture if it doesn't look good in a dark room. So, but that, but that you, you do look good in this dark room that you <laughs> created here. But so every, every thought about design though wants to be listening to whatever that's up to taken together. But this part here, spot, this is called spotting, the distribution of these blobs of light in a dark picture. That's, that is the world of spotting and the spots are good. They're nice in relation to each other. They're pleasing to look at. Uh, how true they are is another question because this is one of the part of the spots. You know, I'm not sure what you're up to here with your values, but... Um, but uh, but again, as I say to you, just if make it look good setting it up. Get used to doing that. Man, we're doing good here. Um, so this thing here, do you really want it that way? If it doesn't have to be that bright, turn it a little bit. It'll take less. If it hit less light hits it, it'll probably get darker. You know, there are ways to dim this down if you want it dimmer. But don't paint fakey. Just don't do it. Set up better. Learn to set up better. I mean, if you're really stuck and you got to dock something off for somebody because it's amusing and they want it, you got to leave them a nice little present because they gave you their guest house. I mean, that's nice. Pretty it up, get out well, of town, whatever. But <laughs> I, in my defense, I wasn't doing an art thing. I just am very bad at saving my lights. So there's just because <laughs> I couldn't get the light back. Craig fashion is good so, for the soul. Yeah. <laughs> just a different crime. <laughs> now that might be, by the way, when you go back into this thing and you can't get it back, if it's wet, you probably you may never get it back. Scrape it off. Do yeah. what Sergeant recommends. The other thing, if it's not wet, paint it pure white. Straight up white. Okay. And then and then okay. and then put the color back into it. And you'll bring it back down instead of trying to bring it up. It's brutal to try to bring anything whiter. Like even my light brush, I whip it out as well as I can yeah, with right. the rag, and I still can't get pure white back. Yeah. It's still. Yeah. So, so get a fresh brush. <laughs> mm. But this really does. It is in this picture. You're probably your brightest white, but it really doesn't want to be for the design of the yeah. picture. It doesn't mean it doesn't. It can't. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be the. It doesn't have to be the brightest light. These things win anyway because they've got busyness. There's variety. There's form. There's a lot of stuff. Right. And there's a one over right. here that's balancing that one, and this is the one in the middle. So you have ways of winning here. Right, right, right. Um, but this is a bit of a worry here that you make the arm that dark. Uh, it is. It is part of the grand light. You know, the general. The the general unit here is includes that. You wouldn't discuss this as part of the darks, but you see this is coming through here and becoming the darks. The neck is part of the darks in this game. So that only you know if that was something that happened in the photograph. I'm not gonna put it to you that way, but just be aware that this is, I'm only here to talk principles, not to, you yeah. know. So I'm not trying to improve this painting for you or anything like that. These are just ideas. Yeah, yeah. This was interesting. I, that, there's, some, there, there's some good development, by the way, in this one. But again, your lights, you just, this, if you're getting beat up by the way you're using paint, <laughs> get, figure out a different way. And I'll tell you, number one is hit your lights first. <laughs> don't, don't put your lights down later. Don't start with your darks. Don't start with your middles. Don't start with your lightest lights. Right. Right. And fill the area with it if you're going to keep having this dirty mess. Fill the area. All I want to know is what the lights are going to do. This is a watercolor pr approach. Put down your clean whites and keep them clean. <laughs> Set this light down, set, set your lightest light wherever it is, and say that's going to be X. Now, this white is a blue, so it's not going to be the white of the canvas, right? 
But whatever it is, if it's got color in it, it's going to be darker than white, right? So you're not going to use up your whites. You're going to save those for highlights wherever they happen to be, your whitest whites. But in the meantime, though, this one here then has to be as strong as it can be. And you have to start anticipating by setting this here and setting this here. You're going to anticipate what's going to happen where they meet. Will they pop? You follow me? So that's what the advantages of spotting colors around the way Sargent does in the description, the way they say he does. But that's, you're having the same problem over here. You didn't set these colors up brilliantly enough from the beginning. The leaf, these reds, they aren't set up brightly enough. You're not getting enough chroma from the end. Now, if this is true, I get you. <laughs> that's a photograph. This looks like it's shot more in the same light, but this still looks cooler than this one. Is that right? So, so this one, the photograph is really, um, I moved this stuff around, the setup around so much, struggling oh, to get right. a composition. And so yep. um, this, the next slide I had, just because the, the lighting was more true to what I was really looking at, whereas right. the lighting in this one is not as true, whereas the setup, this is where the setup landed. Yes. Um, so unfortunately, we have to use our imaginations and merge the lighting from the next slide with the setup from this slide to, to try to get a sense of what I was seeing. Oh, darn. Um, oh, this one's much darker. Much no, no, darker not with you. Right yeah. Now. Oh, that's interesting. But, but, but the setup, so I really struggle with the left side trying to figure it out. And so the previous slide is where the composition ended. But it's, this is much brighter than what I was really seeing in the photograph. I follow that, especially the shadow side. And this one's darker. Yeah. And this one's darker yeah, than so what you're saying? Much yeah. more. That light yeah. effect is much closer to what I had been painting the whole time. The big, the big critique in this, these two, though, would just simply be the lack of life in your colors. And I, I, it does look more and more as I look at these that your big issue is the way you use paint. You probably use too much paint and you probably don't straight for the note. You probably p try to paint up to it, try to creep up to it. Uh, Stop doing yeah. that. Don't be creeping up. Don't make a dirty mess and try to creep in the paint. All you're going to do is get thicker and thicker and never hit it. You know, it's, it's trying to... Using too little paint. I really thought I was using too little. I thought my problem was I needed more paint. Well, if you're not getting color quality, you don't have enough. If you're getting color quality, you have plenty. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> But remember that what you want to be able to do is adjust that color with three more piles of paint and still not have it be thick. <laughs> so you've got to put a quality note down and then you have to adjust it. You have to adjust it and keep in the color life. <laughs> and, then, and, and finally, you want to be able to come back around after you've been three other places, right? <laughs> and adjust it some more and still not be out of control. So that's the great value to the student mind, you know, to the guy who really respects color quality is you want to get it you want to keep the paint mass under control when you're a good painter painting with more paint is very accessible to you when you're a young painter follow that cheap advice paint thick over thin okay. you know yeah. yeah and and everything about the setup is is just that it re if you're going to get to thick as a student no matter what you do and it's going to be hopelessly thick some days so yeah. start as thin as you possibly can, but don't start with less than the quality of the color. What you can do is put down straight paint, chunk it right on there, and then you spread it around. So just I'm just saying that until it's got the right thickness. <laughs> so it's not thick paint, but don't spread it around so you lose the color. Don't let the canvas throw through it or any of that stuff, you know. I'm just saying that's one thing you can do to see what I mean, you know. I think that color one where I show spots, you can see me doing that when I, when I show you my palette and hit some notes. I don't remember what I do, but there's one on the early side. And in oh, that one, you might be one. able, yeah, you might be able to see what I'm doing onto the canvas better. But I never put down paint. Demonstration that was very helpful, but, uh, you know, I had my face right up at the screen. But the demonstration <laughs> you did of the, the red basket was very helpful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, none of that, none of that. You see, by the time I've been all over that whole painting, some parts are getting a little bit thick. But when you get to joints, you don't want joints to rise up into ridges. And from the beginning, especially at the beginning, because they're going to torture you later if you have to move them, which you will. So, so you're painting thin and you're painting ridge free. And yet you're keeping the life in the color. There's your, you know, there's your balance. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah. This one just the life in the colors is a big thing in this one. But again, if you can, if you, whenever you do, if you, if you send me something else, please shoot them side by side. Paint them side by side for the purposes of this exercise. Okay. okay. <laughs> Same light. And this is the last one. John, we have, enough last one. we have enough time to say goodbye. Is there anything else in general I might say? You're going to have to just look at this and see if there's any benefit. And you can get back to me. You know, I mean, see what the benefit is, you know. Yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you about it. Thank you for walking me through. You've been t almost too nice about um, it. So are there any <laughs> sort of, uh, other than what we talked about, are there any sort of general no, things no, that you think are real blind spots for me? No, no. Well, the color is the biggest one and the paint thickness. But the, but the one that, the one that, the one thing I would say to you, though, is that it's amazing. It's impressive to me that you're hearing what I'm saying, actually practicing what I'm saying. So I'm glad to see that what you're showing me is that there's enough video, visual data to confirm what I'm saying. And if you can buy into these aphorisms and all that sort of stuff and watching what you're doing, you know, everything I say to you is gonna make sense. This whole idea of painting from the light to the darks and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, when I saw Sargent's watercolors, I said, oh, I'm gonna start painting from the lights to the darks. I don't care what Sargent said about painting with the darks first. But the fact is he didn't, he went all around the canvas, right? And I'm, when we painted with Gamma, we didn't do go all the way around the canvas. We started at the top and almost like walked our way down the thing. And, yeah. and I say that meaning when we, had, and, and, we, and in these other paintings, we had drawings already done. So we're just filling in blocks, you know, <laughs> like mindlessly filling in blocks. But uh, if you're painting directly like this from life, there's a whole different proposition. You know, there's a whole different uh, bunch of stuff you're going to work with. So I'm just really glad that this stuff is coming through that well for you, uh, because this isn't bad. And your drawing skills and stuff like that are, they're, they're, they're keeping on moving with your, you know, with your, uh, you, you, you know, you're using your eyes very reasonably. Just keep being relational. That's just the cheap advice going forward. Just keep being relational yeah. in every possible way. But the one thing you can't show people in a distance really well is this thickness of paint stuff. So that may be a factor in what's hanging you up. So, so when you think about self learning and self teaching and sort of what you've seen here, do you have any suggestions on where I, I can um, or what I should be doing to keep progressing myself, other than just keep going? Well, just keep trying to be objective to your stuff. You know, in the early phase, so you're becoming more objective all the time. But yeah. like, like, th but this is so hard to judge because I'm not, you're shooting these pictures in the wrong light, so I can't even make judgments about that kind of stuff. But just keep trying to maintain objectivity and above all, relationality, you know, the mentality of the relational in every single thing you do going forward. Nothing bad's going to happen except that you watch, and not, not accept. But what you want to do is make sure you understand that that relational stuff applies to every single aspect of the visual impression. <laughs> Edge relationality, chromal relationality, hue relationality, <laughs> that you don't get out of it any place, <laughs> right? And, that, and in those things, they come in sets, so it's manageable. Hue is a manageable thing, red, yellow, blue, or whatever. You know, edges, well, there's the body of the sharp edges. You don't have to necessarily get a perfect to the soft edges. That's a different thing, right? That's contrast. But you have this whole world of edges that are like each other. It's, a, it's useful because they play games together, right? So let yourself be relational in more exotic ways than you've ever thought to be. Don't just think, I mean, and even though you're trying to make a likeness, but let, let me end this with this. Even though you're just trying to make a likeness, the beauty is the likeness. So let yourself see how this plays to that beautifully. As Ang says, you can draw that leg ugly, or you can see what I see. So he sat, he sits there and looks out, and he sees where the beauty lies, and he makes sure he sits on that until he has the beauty, and that's where the accuracy is going to be. You're not going to be inaccurate. So, and it doesn't look like you have a particular problem that way. It looks like you have a feeling for that already. So, if you but but these things want to become terms or ways of thinking with you that actually have phrases in your head. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's in the self-teaching model. Keep on glomming on to phrases that you know how they work. Even if, you know, sometimes I find in a book a phrase, and I find out years later, that's not what it meant. I don't care. It's my phrase now. It means what I meant. <laughs> I don't care how you do it. You see what I mean? So that yes. is it. It's not just the relational, but it's the beauty aspect. So when you're dealing with a curve, well, are you listening to what it's up to? It plays with curves. I'm looking at the pot top of this pot here and how, this thing here. You can say, well, it plays with curves. But look at the way it plays to this one. Look at that bizarre, beautiful shape. That's a fascinating abstraction, and you don't even know how much it has to do with this one until you start seeing it. You see what I mean? That's just yeah. that's just a, that's just annoyingly beautiful. <laughs> and sometimes you see something like this leg sticking up here, and this one you say that looks very awkward. This one and this one sticking up there. But maybe a minute later you'll see this one sticking out here, and you'll suddenly see that maybe. And plus, this one makes a set of those things, and all of a sudden it isn't so queer. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you're starting to open up and taking in more of the world. And this gets us all back to the idea of seeing the thing as a whole. You can, don't make judgments, local judgments exclusively. What really matters is whether every little thing is contributing to the beauty of the, that's, that's the beauty created by the whole, by the, by the connected stuff, the thing taken together. So how is that any different from writing a book or writing a, a song or a sonnet, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been fun, John. 
Thank you for Thank suggesting you. it and staying in there, you know, and pushing it a bit. Yeah. Thank Maybe you. one of these days we'll see you around the, around the Boston area. <laughs> oh, can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. It'd be fun to meet you. Yeah. This has been great. Be Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Zoom us out of here, or you don't even need to. And I'm just going to talk to my people for two seconds while we still have two minutes left. I'm amazed how long this goes. Take care, man. It's been great. Take care. Talk to you later, Paul. Bye bye. Recording stopped. So, um, yeah, I hope, I hope, I got, I hope we got something out of that, people. <laughs> I'm seeing myself on the screen here. Uh, probably the mirror image, but the. Um, I just wanted to say, um, this is a long one. I don't, I probably shouldn't have taken on so many pictures and I probably shouldn't have had uh, John talk as much as he did, but we finally got that adjusted. And But um, I hope this works for you all. Uh, let me know how it does and uh, what I might do differently. I'm eager to see if this is a benefit. Uh, you can see that John has really dramatically become, you know, his whole education is rather out of this studio, this online studio that we're doing right here. So, um, I'm really eager to see if it's beneficial to you all and um, because it brings more flesh to some of the things we've talked about. All right. Again, thank you all very much uh, for your contributions, donations, um, uh, uh, comments, sharing, liking, all the rest of that stuff. It's much appreciated. And if I didn't catch you this time and you made a contribution, <laughs> a donation, I will make sure I mention it in the next one. Again, have a great week and see you next time.